And here we are back with another edition of Your Palm Beach Guide. This is Doug Evans, President and CEO of the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce, the Chamber of Commerce on the island of Palm Beach, uh, the America's first resort winter destination. And, oh, you know, what a great place to live in the weather's perfect this week. With me today is Jeff Sofer. Hi there. Jeff owns uh, several companies. One on his shirt says Coastal Gardens, which yes. uh, if you live in town here like I do, you see his teams and crews out doing all kinds of things. Jeff is also a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Jeff also is the architect and one of the chairs of one of our groups, which we'll talk about in a minute. But Jeff, welcome. Are you like a native Floridian? I just I'm, I think I'm close to a native Floridian. Do you know why, Doug? Why is that? Because I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. I am now 54. I moved here when I was seven. So how many, let's calculate that. Seven minus 54, that's 47. So I've lived here 47 years. He just showed us he's a CPA also. He just, he can count backwards. So this is amazing. <laughs> well, I would say an accountant, maybe yeah, not. See, yeah, I haven't gone that far. Bookkeeping and, and schooling. Finances. Yeah. So St. Louis to here, which is amazing because yeah. that, you know, that's a, that's a common denominator because our, the board chair of the chamber of commerce, Bill Shepard is a St. Louis guy. Is he? Also. I, you know, I didn't know yes, that. Yes. I'm a very simple um, person, very simple from the Midwest. You know how simple and Kyle Lux, who's yeah. an artist, who's the chamber. He's also St. Louis. It's a St. Louis kind of thing, the Palm Beach yes. Chamber of Commerce. So, so you own Coastal Gardens yep. and I think several other businesses. Tell me about them and how uh, this guy from St. Louis at seven years old, how'd you get in this business here so on the island? Yes, let's talk about this. So this is the exciting story. Are you ready? So Sorry. the exciting story is, is that when I was young, I was a young man, You're still young, young yes. boy, young man. I really wanted to just, I mean, I just had a thousand pound I had a thousand pound horsepower engine in my rear end and I just wanted to go with everything I did. Go, 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 go. And I've always been like that. And, you know, obviously it has metamorphosized into different things. And I guess through all of my trials and tribulations and exciting parts of my life, this is where I have ended up, which is where we have six companies, my brother and I. If you go to www.natures experts.com. You will see all six of our companies. We have three landscape companies, a tree company, a pest control company, and then a company that does like floral art and styling and all that kind of stuff for houses, like interior plants. We do a lot of very high end hotels with that company, private you know, homes. private homes. Of course, we've got some big ones. Um, and you know, they have floor plants. There's planters that they're interested in, outside, inside flowers, live artificial. But, but wasn't the entree into this whole thing the, was the floral shop? Yes. The Threlkel Yes. And, we, and, and at one time we had eight flower shops, but you know, the flower business changed so significantly that I being with that go, 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 go. I was sort of not going, I was like sitting and wondering what was going on and why is it not busy? And I was always someone to go get business. So I decided, you know what, we want to take part in this interior plantscape stuff. So I was like, wow, you know, there's someone that comes and waters and takes care of these plants. They put flower arrangements inside and then they do orchid plants and there's green walls and there's artificial stuff and there's all this stuff that they do. And we, if we get into a building, think like if you get into a real class A building, a residential one, or even commercial, you go in, you do everything in the lobby. It's like a stage. So Correct. you get paid. It's a set. It's a movie yes. set. Yeah. So you get paid for everyone to see how beautiful and how talented you guys are. And then they sort of want it for their suites, you know, if it's a commercial sure. building or for their residences, if they live there. And uh, I don't know, that world has always really turned me on that I wanted to be in doing high end and ultra high end. I'm really like, I gravitate toward that. And so we do mostly that with a lot of our companies. We do some commercial work too, of course, like uh, our tree company, which is called Sherlock Tree Company, which is the biggest in South Florida. We have grown it to be the largest. Yeah. And Sherlock has done like, for example, like where there was like all aboard Florida before Brightline, yeah. it was like, we cleared and grubbed. We got the contract to clear and grub the first 69 miles. So we do stuff like that. We do stuff for municipalities. We do stuff for cities, so, stuff for so, towns. So with all this though, circling back, cause I want to understand this about 20, 30 years ago, friends of mine owned a floral shop yeah. and, and I volunteered there. Yes. Boy, that was a different time with flower shops. I volunteered there one day yeah. to help on Valentine's day of all days. Oh, it's wacko crazy. I had no idea what I was yeah. doing, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was making, I was making displays of flowers yeah, and, yeah. and the people were buying them. I'm like, you're buying this. And I just right. threw this together, but it changed because what people want more, it's just online flowers. It kind of like tapped in your business and it just really kind of diluted. Let me give you some names, Publix, Walmart, okay. Target, 
Fresh market. So got it. It. And what is it? It was around, you know, it's been doing, they've been doing that for a long time. Right. But for the first several years of it, it was fine. But then it really started making a dent in it. And what happened is the wire services, you've heard of FTD. Yeah. And maybe a lot of you have heard of Teleflora. So they started taking bigger chunks out of the money that you would get, that they would send you orders. They would pay, take bigger. And all the expenses were all going up everywhere. Flower costs were going up. Everything was going up. Because remember, all these farms that are selling all these flowers, they're selling way more flowers volume, than they used to because volume. they were now selling to Walmart, to Publix. To, and so they were raising all their prices because they knew that they were in such demand, right? So it's just the business model for me did not make sense. So maybe for someone else it would have. So you've got the experience in a flower shop and your brother, I'm assuming. Yes, my brother as well. What prompted you to say, okay, then I'll buy a tree company. I'll buy a landscaping company. Where did that come from? Because my brother who works with me is 17 years younger than me. And my brother, we were, I, I paid him very handsomely when he worked for me with all these flower shops. He did a lot of different things and fulfilled a lot of different roles. And being that he's 17 years younger, he has like a whole fresh, let's use this word not to be a pun intended, green way of doing things. Okay. You know what I mean? He's much greener than me at that time. And uh, I sort of let all his ideas in and I was like, you know what? Who knows where this can go? My brother wants to make more money. He's eventually going to want to have a family. He's going to want to get married. He's going to have kids. And I want to continue to, to do well. So we decided how do we, you know, sort of pivot, but also stay within our realm, right? right? So we had made a couple mistakes along the way. I owned this property in Fort Lauderdale and next to us was a Miami subs. So I owned the Miami subs, but then the, the guy wasn't paying me rent and wasn't paying Miami subs royalties. And the guy from Miami subs, who's the owner of Miami subs says to me, Hey, let's part, let's do this. Why don't you get in? Why don't you take over the, the Miami subs? Why don't you take over the franchise? And I said, you know, I thought to myself, you know, very arrogantly in my head, Oh, I've had some success with all these things. I'll I, do everything, sandwiches. Everything. Yeah. Oh, we'll sell heroes, you know? Well, and I was like, you know, it's a formula and you know, pit bulls involved and you're going to meet pit bull and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. How'd that go? So How'd that go it for did you? not go well. <laughs> and it taught me don't be so arrogant in your head thinking you can do anything because you can't. And everything is, you know, I realized that, you know, I didn't want to be a jack of all trades. I shouldn't be a jack of all trades. And then with all of these companies, we're not. You know, we have separate companies. That's why I said you go to www.naturesexperts.com. You see all the individual companies. They're all individual entities with their own experts such as Got nature's it. experts. Got it. So everybody operates on their own, but yet you get all of us as a group. So if you, for example, need an arborist report or you need something tree health or you need so on and so forth, then you're having our landscape company. The tree guys are available to you. Something with pest control or fertilization. They're all licensed. They're all like... But your pest control is exterior. It's it's all yes, about the trees yes, and yes. the bushes and the in white flies. Interior stuff yeah. is the stuff we do with the Jim Threckle Botanicals Company. And then that's the stuff we talked about for florals and plants and orchids and green walls and so on, which we do green walls inside and outside. We do, let me just put it this way. We do everything botanical that you can possibly imagine, whether it's live or, 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 or yeah. Or, I mean, look at all the artificial turf or, we put down, you know, what is the largest business out of, out of the, your collection, your, your menu of operations, you know, which is your kind, business? It's kind of a three-way tie right now between the tree company and two of the landscape companies. Got but it. mostly I would say the tree company probably wins out on doing the most volume, but um, it's interesting because, you know, what happens is when you sort of put these companies all together and you're a salesperson and someone who creates sales like myself, you go in with one avenue, the person needs you to say even, hey, deliver a flower arrangement. Think about a flower arrangement going to someone who's trimming all the trees around the house right. or someone who's going into being doing pest control. It's just suggestive selling. And I'm good at suggestive selling. I am not good at everything, a la the Miami subs Miami years subs. that I had. Miami subs. Uh, and I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'll tell you and I'll tell anyone listening, I'm very, very good at sales because, you know, no one really trains you to be a salesperson. No. And so to me, how I sell is I just, I, I feel like you know, we all have these five senses. So if you can titillate one or all of people's five senses, it gets them excited and they get engaged in it and they want what you're selling. And then the most important part comes, that's easy for me, the sales. The most important part is that you really do over deliver for every client. You really, really do. You have to do such a good job. And we are committed to doing a good job to everyone. And if we don't, and there's something that we do wrong, 
we take responsibility I was, for I was it. going to bring that up because, you know, in, in Palm Beach, which is where I live and yes. we, we love, yes. you're dealing with some very um, wealthy. Yes. And other, particular, particular, particular. Highly educated. That's particular, right. Particular. Right. Specific. Demanding. Who can afford anything they want to afford. That's right. And it takes a special, and I know you personally very, very well. Yes. It, it takes a special personality to be able to deal with that. Yes. And these homes are worth 70, 80, 90 million dollars for a house. And keep going. Yeah, and keep going. Yeah. yeah. And keep going the yeah. next one for four hundred million dollars. Yeah. But these are amazing. Do you do you do you still get joy out of going to you, you know, people would say you've seen uh, I guess you've seen you, it all. If you've lived here for yeah. a while, it's like <laughs> it's a, just a it's another big house. Well, I but personally, these are not these are yeah. gorgeous pieces of art right. in every house. Oh yes. And so for me. I kind of tell people, God, I've seen it all. I've done it for so long, but I've seen it all. But obviously, you know, you continue to see different ones as you move on. But you've seen it all in the sense that you've been in like almost every kind of situation. You've been in every kind of like thing has been ordered and done and planted and trimmed and this and that. But that cannot be something that you focus on. What you have to focus on is this is somebody that wants what they want and they're paying their money. Whether they're a billionaire or whether they're not, it does not matter. It's fun and exciting and great and you get to see things on a larger scale or you get to see if they want more or bigger or better, that's great. But you have to give them exactly what they're looking for and just knock it out of the park. You have to. Now, whether the client is someone in one of those houses or someone's in a much smaller house, it's really, it really at the end of the day doesn't matter. We do, there's a lot of celebrities too, you know, yeah, Palm Beach Island. And that you can't get taken away with either. No. It's very, very important to make sure that you're focused on doing a really good job. And if you do a really good job, everything falls into place. You know, it really does. I mean, we have wonderful clients and I will credit you with helping us an um, an introduction in the beginning. You know, we do the Breakers Hotel. We have for so many years, we do all the installations there. We do some of the tree trimming there. It's been wonderful. We actually do some of the tree trimming for the town also. It's a magical location. It's amazing. But the colony was always a place that I really wanted to break into because I used to, you know, go there all the time. And I would see that the landscaping just didn't befit the pink paradise. Paradise, you know, which yeah. is what they call themselves. It's an oasis. Yeah. And I know that you knew, know, you knew and know Sarah Wettenhall very well. One of well. my board members who's and a leading business owner. Here I was dying to get in there and I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and I'm, I'm very aggressive. And what happened, Jeff? Yeah. And, and it just kind of kept falling on deaf ears. And then I had a project behind the colony with someone who owns the property behind it, 150 Worth. Yep. And they hired us to do a bunch of trees. So I used that as an entree to get in there to meet the general manager of the hotel but he was still a little, let's call it prickly toward me a little, you know what I mean? Like couldn't, he was like a little bit of a porcupine because he's busy and got lots to do. And so on and so forth. Very great guy. But you know, I didn't get that chance, you know, and you swooped in like my knight in shining armor. (laughs) All you did is tell Sarah about me and you gave me the opportunity to lose it or get it. Correct. You know what I mean? And I got it, but I'm telling you sometimes these opportunities, I don't think that people pay enough attention to how they got an opportunity because it is so exciting to think back because I do now, you know, and like how I, you gave me the opportunity. And listen, we've performed. I know she loves us and I love her. You, you, you gave me the perfect segue here. Sure. You're listening to Doug Evans. I'm president and CEO of the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I'm here with Jeff Soferde, who owns Coastal Gardens. So if you are listening halfway through this podcast, it's the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce, the islands, a wonderful repository of business and connections and nonprofits. And Jeff Sofer is with me, who owns Coastal Gardens and a bunch of other companies. And we're talking about introductions. And he got introduced to Sarah Wettenhall, who owns the... Yes. Incredible Colony Hotel, the storied historic hotel, the Pink Palace. It's just gorgeous. Paradise. Pink Paradise. Yes. There you go. Pink Paradise. And uh, Sarah's done an amazing job there. It would write down to the attention to detail. And so the Chamber of Commerce in Palm Beach, it's a business organization for yeah. for profits and nonprofits. Yeah. And part of my job, which I love, which I don't see as a job, I see as my love doing, is making introductions. So introduce Jeff Soper to Sarah Wetton Hall, and the rest is history. And uh, and the property looks gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It does. So Jeff, you joined the Chamber of Commerce yes. uh, during 
during my tenure here, which yes. has been over the past year or yes. so. And uh, we became friends first. Yes, and we then, did. Then you yes, decided to join the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, and yes. We met at the Colony Hotel. Yes, fact. we did. Uh, yes, Sarah's we did. got a great, great operation there. And you decided to join the Chamber of Commerce, hopefully not because I said, oh, you should join the Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> uh, because like you, I don't do that. It's like, it's well, either think, a fair I, or it's not. I think we should talk about the conversation we had about yeah. the Chamber of Commerce, because it was a serious conversation, and, and I was very excited about the conversation. So I'm looking to be engaged with people and to do business. That's what I want to do. I want to be friends. Of course, you and I became friends, but it is exciting to me for my, my business part of my world to be engaged in business with people and doing business and like-minded people that because way. Because it's about the bottom That's line. That's right. Well, listen, what's the, what's the name of the Chamber of Commerce? Chamber of Commerce. Commerce. And I think that a lot of people think it's, they show up, they socialize, so on and so forth. And believe me, that's part of business, you know, so, but it's, you really have need to have like an intention. And I think I thought at the time, cause I didn't know you well, but I knew you well enough that I thought that you had a real intention of making the chamber of commerce sort of, you know, sort of taking a little bit of a different direction. We're a convener. Yeah. We convene. We can create, we can create the, the atmosphere for people to come together. But like you said, what you do with it, it's yours to to win or lose. That's right. Again, you're giving the chamber is giving people an opportunity to get there. And what are you going to do with that opportunity? You can't pay your, whatever the cost is. I forget what it is to join. You can't pay that and do nothing. You can't even pay that go to the breakfast and do nothing. You can't even pay that, be a trustee and do nothing. You have to really engage. And if you do, it's right there Correct. for you. And, and for your, for yours, a for-profit company, for your $700 investment yes, every year to join, to join, you get to come to 10 breakfasts where mm-hmm. over the course of those 10, you'll be amongst five or 6,000 people over the course of 10 months. That's right. And that's five to to 6,000 people That's to introduce right. yourself to. That's right. There. And what's nice about this, Jeff, is that, you know, even if it's a charity in the room, those charities have donors, they have board members, there's potential business there. We also, as we try to think about with the chamber, different ways to grow your business and other businesses, we decided to create these verticals. That's these, right. These, these focus Genius. groups, if you will. It's, it's so amazing. Yeah. And one we've created is the Real Estate Development Council, yep. which I will say the minute I said this out loud from the stage of the Breakers Hotel, yep. like, I want to do that. I want to yeah, do that. I want to yeah, do it. So yeah, yeah. Jeff comes to me and he says, I want to do this. What can I do? What can I do? I said, well, be careful what you wish for, because now you can step up to the plate <laughs> and you can be the architect <laughs> of this group. That's and part right. of that is, let's populate the committee if you will. And so you you put together a list of people who you called and I called, and now we've got this robust group of people who are That's in the right. real estate and development industry. These are landscapers. These are realtors. These are architects. These are builders. These are developers. Um, it's a group of people, a, a steering committee of seven people. So with this, Jeff, I know where we want this to go. So mm-hmm. where do you... It's all about business. It's about making connections. And what 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 surprised me about this, and I want to talk before you, you jump into this, was when we convened that first group of 15 people in the boardroom of the Chamber of Commerce, people didn't know each other. And I've always assumed, because I come from the cultural sector, everybody knows everybody. I don't If it's the Broadway business, I know pretty much everybody in the Broadway business. Even that's a big industry. There's 15 people who didn't know each other. I found it surprising and shocking. There's the opportunity, right? One hundred percent. Yeah, I, Doug, listen, this is something that you gave everybody the opportunity to come to. You gave them a concept, and what are we going to do with the concept? Because that's all it is—is is a concept. It's a concept. And you said this side doesn't know this side really. They really don't know each other. They need to start talking. Correct. That's what you said, and it's like that's what we're doing. So it's like you have people that actually are intentionally getting involved and like going to you and saying, okay, Doug, now we've talked about this. Now where should we go? And then you give us something more. And then we go, okay, now we've done this. Now what do we do? Like it just keeps sort of evolving into something that I think you you started it in a way where all you, I think you knew was like, I know that real estate and people that are in my space, which is landscape architects, which are landscape installers and maintenance like me, which are uh, interior design because they, you know, obviously uh, scape all of the patios and all of the hardscape and everything that they do there. And obviously builders and, you know, because we all, live in outdoor living yes, worlds. It's an yeah, outdoor inside, living world is, inside and outside. It's all the same. Exactly. And because you can do that all year here. So because of that, it's like all these real estate agents, all these real estate investors, all the stuff with real estate, which is the number one industry in Palm right. Beach. Period. That's right. It's like 
they know who they've heard of in my space and we know who we've heard of in their space, but how do you know who you can really count on? How do you know who you can really, is really going to come through for you on both sides, you know? And just to start talking, you start realizing, gosh, there's so much more to these real estate agents and real estate, like I said, investors and people involved with real, than I realized, even me who knows a lot about it. And then for them, I think it's the same thing. And we're starting to sort of make relationships with the intention of doing business and really trying to, you know, help one another. People really do not put enough emphasis on referrals and really getting to know people. And I'm telling you, and on your people's five senses, because when you're friends with me and you know me, whether it's business or friend, there's Five, some or all of your five senses going on. And that's really a human being. Yeah, so it's, it's like it's, in it business, or, it's like, so I just try, and it's not like I'm like overly anything. I just am myself. And I just, that's always stuff I think in my head is like, I'm dealing with other human beings. So it's like, whether you're dealing with someone who's intimidating because they're you know very wealthy and they're this, it doesn't really intimidate me. We're it's all just, still human beings. Yeah, and one of the I things, mean, Jeff, that, you know, when you talk about this community and exactly. you, you really embody this is, and the people that I continue to work <clears> with, <throat> I've been in town 30 years. So yeah, you know, I've, yeah. I've watched this yes. grow and fall and rise and fall yes. and and Ponzi schemes and all kinds of stuff here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's happened. It's, it's happened. Awful. And, and yeah. hopefully it'll never happen it again. Yeah. But the reality is when you start to convene people together like you, yes, you want to make money. Yes, you want to grow coastal gardens or nature's experts or one of your businesses. But you also, the people in this town tend to just be genuinely, let me help you whether I get something out of it or not. Yes. That's what I like about this committee. Yes. That's what yes. I love about you. Yes. Yes. And it's like, you know, Jeff, who do you know that does faux stone work because there's a terracotta mansion collapsing and they can't afford terracotta? You know, the stone guy who creates this, this you stuff. Be, you become, if you're, it's if crazy. You, if you're some, like, I feel like you're this way too. <clears throat> In fact, I know that you're this way. I don't feel that you you are this way. Your resource, yeah. As a person, you are a resource, and that to me is something that's underestimated. A lot of people don't realize there are certain people that are such amazing resources because not only can you just suggest someone, you're going to suggest who you know will do the right thing for everybody, and exactly. not only that, someone who will do the right thing. And if there's something going on awry there, you will then call that person and say, "Hey, I I referred you this person. You know, they're a little wondering what's going on. What can you, you know, you you follow through. You know, so many people." leave things where it's, you know, I'm going to tell you something else interesting. Everybody wants to be someone who they say, oh, I'm a, I, I'm a multitasker. To me, I don't really think that's impressive being a multitasker. Everyone can do a lot of stuff, but everyone can complete a lot of stuff. That's correct. So a multi-completer is what I think <laughs> is more important than a multitasker. I'm laughing because I know you. You come and said, Doug, did you do this yet? It's like, no, Jeff, I haven't because I've been very busy. I need Are you, you saying to I'm a nag? No, not at all. No, <laughs> I, I just, but you know, it, it, but what's important about that is, you know, that's in your DNA yeah. to complete yeah. tasks and get yeah. them done. Yeah. Because I'll say to you, Jeff, I gave in you this, a timely manner. Yeah, Jeff, I yeah. gave you this contact. Did you call him or her? Absolutely, it's done. I did it yes. three days ago. It's yes. like I'm not yes. surprised. Right. It's done, kind of right. thing. So, to me, this is what's important about coastal gardens, nature's experts, the businesses. But it's also about your drive to convene people. Also, you and I share that this is a small town. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's you know nine thousand really full time residents. Me being mm-hmm. one of them, mm-hmm. it blossoms and blooms this time. Oh, you know, the I cars love, are back. I love the, the words that back. you're using. It blossoms yeah. and blooms, yes. and then of course. Spring comes and then all of a sudden it goes up to, to, to summer yes. and the flowers drop okay, let's off. Use and it erodes and, away. Yes, and they yeah, go. The, right. the folks head back to the Hamptons, <laughs> uh, to Martha's Vineyard, to Chicago, to wherever. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but you know, you have a reputation in town, and the so, only thing you truly own in your life is your reputation. You own absolutely nothing. And, and, else. and what is the standard thing you heard when you were young? And it's so true. It takes so long to build it. And like that, and I snapped, if you guys can't hear me, snap. Well, they can see you. Oh, you can uh, see me. You snap and it's it's gone or it's damaged. It's damaged. And then the recovery effort takes a long time. Now we're talking about completing and following through. So let's talk about Palm Beach with just that concept. Sure. So anybody will talk about that concept in the world wants people to complete things. In Palm Beach, on that island, you need to complete it 
now, <laughs> now, now, right now. Which is driven by the, right now. the the owner of the house, by the town, by the regulations. By the property manager. The property manager, by everybody. Get it done now. And now. What, what were you doing with your time? Right now. And why am I not first? Right now. Exactly. But that's, that's okay. But you know, Jeff, going into business as you have with your, with your, your companies, you go into it knowing that, that this is, this, I'm, I, I have to say this, and it's the truth for our listeners uh, to the podcast and, and you're viewing us on YouTube. This place is, as a town, is nothing short of perfection. Yes. If you want yes. to repaint your house white, you have yes. to get permission to paint it That's white right. again. That's right. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. Because, it, and it's not about, it's not about keeping people out. It's about maintaining this beautiful town, this existence, the history, the history of Palm Beach. It's, it's, it's so funny. You just brought that up. I caught what you just brought up. You said, it's not about keeping people out. I am so tired of people saying, oh, the, the, you know, it's about p- people in Palm Beach on Palm Beachers want people to be out. It's not true. Not- just respect what has been created here. And if you're not going to respect it and you're going to fight against it, this is not the place for, not you. Place for you. No, that's it. No, but but don't you think, Jeff? That's 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 a good statement for any kind of community you move into. Totally. Whether it's a condo building, a gated community, yes. whether you're in Ohio or yes. Texas or Phoenix, you're either part of the community or not. Yes. And I, what I love about this yes. this this town that we have here is that we care about the quality of life. That's right. And we have a wonderful school on the island, a public school. We have great restaurants and businesses that only succeed if they're really good at what they do. And if you can't afford to live on Palm Beach Island or geographically it doesn't work for you, whatever the reason is, you can still come and enjoy the restaurants, the atmosphere. The hotels. How about just the vibe? Because the vibe. there is. You drive over that bridge, there's a vibe. And guess what? The houses play a part in it, but that's not the only part. Just the public. How about the parks? The parks that are open and free how, to the public. How about the way that the roads have been designed and you have these big sprawling lawns in the middle and you have like where it looks like a like small town, you know, like yeah. America, like in certain areas and but you this, drive to a different, it's amazing. This is, this is small town America. Yes. It's a small town yes. that happens to be on the water. Yes. And when you, when you pull into off of County Road, South County Road, this big hotel called the breakers yes. and you see all these palm trees, you know, that Threl Cal botanicals and coastal gardens <laughs> and all the other, uh, and Dias and, brothers and, and all, and Sherlock all, Tree of, all of the Jeff Sofer yes. companies yeah. uh, are a part of the maintenance and the beautification yeah. and the brand, the That's brand right. of Palm That's Beach. Right. That's right. That's right. And I want to tell you something else. This can never, ever, ever, ever be shortchanged. A company is only as good as the people that work there. Yeah. We have 220 employees between all these companies and people shake their head. Oh my God, how do you do it? How do you do it? You know what you do it again with the five senses, every single person I see them with, I don't see them all every day, but I see them and I treat every, first of all, everyone is equal as far as a human being. It just happens to be the pecking order of a business. You know, you have the sure. owner and then you have managers, but everyone is treated like gold because the truth is they are working with you for a goal to make people happy. They want to keep their job. They want the company to be busy. They want us to be successful. And if you're nice and you're appreciative and you don't just say, Oh, I appreciate you, but you actually are with them and you talk to them and you get to know some of them and you, you know, you say you give them high fives and you go, whatever I do, it's just whatever I feel. I just want to engage with everybody every day. It's almost like I can't get enough human interaction every day that I just so enjoy, no matter who they are. I think that's, I think from the businesses I know who are members, uh, uh, that's a common denominator for the successful businesses. Yes. Whether it's a restaurant on Worth Avenue or it's, or it's a hotel or it's a retailer, they, the ones who treat their staff and team and colleagues well, the ones who are the most successful. On because the look island. what they're going to do. They're going to then go out from that being treated well. And I mean, what's their, their, their sort of like, and they rarely leave your employment. Yes. They, they stay yes. So. There's not a, there's not a, there's not a door that goes around and around with us. So Jeff wrapping up here, you yeah. know, I, I'm thrilled that you remember the chamber and if people want to get a hold of what's the easiest website, uh, for coastal gardens and your companies or phone numbers, or how do they reach Jeff? So sure. or the so, entrepreneur, so I am more than happy to get, well, I am the chief of enthusiasm and growth for my company. (laughs) And I love that. I love my title. Um, And so you can reach me. This is my cell phone number. I love when people call me. It's 561-702-4528. 
two, one. I'll give it again real quick. Again, five, six, one, seven, zero, two, four, five, two, one. And if I don't answer, which is unusual, which but is if I'm busy, yes. uh, if I you don't can text answer, him, I, you can text <laughs> me at that number or I promise you, I'll call you back. Otherwise you can look and if you're in Palm beach, you can look at our rolling billboards every day that are going all over the Island. It's coastal gardens, landscape professionals on Instagram. You can find us at coastal gardens pro. That's our handle at Coastal Gardens Pro. And again, if you want to go to the website that has all of our companies and you, everyone will put you in touch with me if you didn't get our num- my number before, just go to Nature's Experts, both plural, dot com. And if you follow Jeff on Instagram, he's on there every day with educational things, which is interesting. It's like, there's, here's what we're doing today. It's not like, oh, we're a company. We're wonderful. It's, it's educational. You talk about the installations. Oh, you yeah. talk about what you're doing. You get to see these beautiful videos of these houses and these grounds and things. So uh, to me, it's, it's magical. And you get to see people excited on Tuesdays because Tuesdays are terrific. Tuesdays, we make a big deal about that on Instagram. Didn't know and we that. also okay, make a big me. deal about Friday Junior. Thursday is considered Friday Junior. So sometimes we make <laughs> a big deal about that. Uh, you guys can see me, just get in touch with me. I'll put you on the Instagram. The Instagram actually that I run from my phone is at, <clears throat> excuse me, at Jim Threlkel Botanicals. So it's J I M T like Tom H R E L K E L Botanicals. He's the chief excitement officer, the CEO of enthusiasm the chief, enthusiasm the chief and excitement growth. officer, chief of enthusiasm. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. And thanks for being a member of the chamber and one of the architects of the real estate development uh, committee. I appreciate it's, that you're the uh, chief of enthusiasm for the chamber. Cause you are Doug, you really are. It's, and every, of, it's infectious. It's, it's a lot of caffeine. I think sometimes it, or it's, it's, you it's, know, it's, 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 it's good. You're listening to Doug Evans. It's your Palm beach guide. I'm the presidency of the Palm beach chamber of commerce. Thanks for listening. We're coming up with more, more, uh, issues, more issues, more, uh, more positive podcasts every week. Tune in where you get your favorite podcast. We're at the studios of Pod Populi here in Palm Beach Gardens. They're a sponsor. They are a partner. They're lots of fun, Pod Populi. Boy, do they do podcasts. They've got gorgeous studios. So check them out. Do your own podcast. Get out there in the world and make this happen. Jeff, thanks a lot. We'll see you at the uh, next so chamber welcome. event. You're you so it. welcome. Okay. Have a great day. <laughs>